live, local, breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. And we begin with continuing coverage of breaking news out of Greenville County. A homeless woman has been shot near a Bilo store on West Blue Ridge Drive. Our crews there at the scene say it appears the shooting happened in a wooded area behind the Bilo off Stanford Road. And tonight, officials believe the woman had been living in those woods. Investigators say the woman appears to be in her mid 40s. They say the bullet grazed her forehead. She was taken to the hospital. Deputies say she is expected to be okay. Now, right now, investigators say they are talking to a person of interest in the case, but no charges have been filed so far. Of course, we're working to bring you more from the scene, and we'll keep you up to date, of course, on WIFF4.com and right here on WIFF News 4 at 11. Now to the final governor's debate before Election Day. WIFF News 4's Liz Loheis is outside of the debate site on Furman's campus. Liz, this debate could be significant. Yes, Michael and Carol, according to the latest poll, about 12% of voters are still undecided. So tonight's debate here at Furman University could be very important. And I want to show you behind me, you can see that um, some supporters of both Governor Nikki Haley and Vincent Shaheen are waving flags ahead of this debate tonight. Tickets are gone, and the auditorium holds about 1,000 people, so it is expected to be a big crowd. The hour long debate will focus on education and health care. Political analyst Chip Falkel says attacks concerning ethics and the economy are expected. I, I do expect both uh, Irvin and, and Shaheen to be on the attack. They have no choice. Um, at the same time, attacks can often look desperate. And so they have to be strategic, they have to be uh, on point, and they have to have, be substantive. Again, the debate starts at 7 o'clock here at Furman University. We'll have much more Commitment 2014 coverage for you tonight at 11. Liz Lohheis, WIFF News 4, live at Furman University. We'll see you then, Liz. Thank you. A lot of money is rolling in this election, and tonight we can tell you exactly how much. The latest filings with the South Carolina Ethics Commission are in, and records show that Governor Haley is leading in contributions. Tim Waller continues our Commitment 2014 coverage. Well, for Governor Haley, Michael, and Carol, this has been a very lucrative election cycle. The most lucrative so far during the entire election cycle this year. Here is the proof. In the last three months, Haley's campaign has raised $1.2 million. And when you add what's left from previous fundraising cycles, she heads into the final two weeks with $1.4 million cash in hand. Vincent Shaheen, the Democrat in the race, also reporting record contributions of $803,000. He now has $578,000 in cash on hand. Tom Irvin, the independent Republican running for governor, received 38,000 in contributions this quarter. But when you add the more than $2 million loan that Irvin has taken out to self fund his campaign, watch this. The dollar figure in the contributions category jumps quickly to $2.3 million. But again, only 38,000 of that is from actual contributions. Now, the lieutenant governor's race, Republican candidate Henry McMaster raising 348,000 this quarter. His Democratic opponent, Bakari Sellers, reporting just over $125,000. For all the candidates, much of that money will be spent in the next two weeks on things like campaign stops and political advertisements. Michael? All right, Tim, thank you. Now, to the latest on the Ebola headlines for you tonight. The CDC announcing new guidelines for fighting the virus. In fact, health workers will now have to wear face shields, hoods, and boot covers that leave no part of the body exposed. North Carolina's largest hospitals, including Mission in Asheville, have procedures in place. Place for quarantining patients, removing gear, and hand sanitizing. The U.S. is now ordering anyone coming from the states of Liberia, Sierra Leone, or Guinea to go through one of only five airports that are screening passengers for Ebola. Those airports are JFK in New York, Newark, New Jersey, Washington, Dulles, Chicago's O'Hare, and Hartsfield in Atlanta. WIFF News 4's Mandy Gaither is live and local on Clemson University's campus. And Mandy, the school has a pretty large international population. Are there any concerns among the students? Well, Carol, I did check on that today, and there are currently no students enrolled here at Clemson that are from the three affected countries in Africa, but still the campus's health department is getting prepared just in case. The suit covers the entire body from the, from the shoes up to the top of the head. This is just some of the CDC recommended protective gear that staff at Clemson University's Redfern Health Center will be wearing if a student is suspected of having Ebola. We are in the process of 
uh, training the staff on how to put that on and take it off safely. Redfern Executive Director George Clay says if a student walks in with an elevated fever, the first step is to screen the student. Ask if he or she had recently traveled to Liberia, Guinea, or Sierra Leone, the three countries currently affected by the virus. Then access the degree of risk, whether the student could have been exposed. If the answer to those questions is yes, DHEC would be notified and the student would be isolated in this room at Redfern and staff would wear these suits. Clemson University currently has about 40 of the suits and is working to order new equipment recommended today by the CDC. And in the next few weeks, staff here at Clemson will be doing drills, practicing putting on and taking off that protect, protective gear that you just saw, and going through the process of actually taking care of a potential Ebola patient. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Clemson. And these some high school students ended up taken to the hospital after this school bus wreck on Parkins Mill Road. Sky 4 was soon over it. Uh, police tell us 20 JL Mann High School students were aboard the bus when the crash happened. 18 students on the bus were put on another bus. Two were taken to the hospital, as I mentioned. A doctor faces charges after officials say he illegally prescribed drugs to a man and woman who were in prison. The Department of Health and Environmental Control charged Stanley Coleman, Jr. with violating a drug distribution law. Coleman was a doctor at Traveler's Rest Family Medicine at the time. Officials say he wrote prescriptions for oxycodone. In Spartanburg, a park is now dedicated to a former city employee and a former Clemson star who was killed in a wreck. Brian Wofford died in 2012 while riding his motorcycle. He was the Spartanburg Parks and Recreation Superintendent. Now the South Converse Street Park has a plaque in his honor. The Neighborhood Association named the play area after Wofford for his dedicated service to the community. Also in Spartanburg, new high-rise homes are proving that the city's lofty goals of making a downtown destination are well within reach. WIFF News 4's Mike McCormick has that story. It was built in 1950 and known as the Schuyler Building. A major modern makeover gave the 88 units inside it a new lease on life. It's unreal. I mean, but really, even being in the building, I mean, you can kind of feel it. It's city living. And um, we're here in Spartanburg, which we're just so excited to be. And it's updated, it's new, but you still have the charm of the Schuyler Building as well. Pace Snellings is the leasing agent. She showed us around. There are studio and one bedroom homes for rent. Take a look at the view. And on the roof, there's no window in the way when you eye the area. Up here, there's a patio and a fitness center, and there will soon be a dipping pool. People walk in to any of the floor plans that we have, and they're just like, wow. And they're like, go Spartanburg. The Church Street lofts are almost 50% full, and they only opened a month ago. Spartanburg's communications manager, Will Rothschild, says other developers were waiting to see how well the lofts do before deciding to build here. See those absorbed so quickly, it's just affirmation that there's a lot of pent up demand to be downtown. If you want to take a closer look inside the lofts, look for the slideshow on WIFF4.com. Mike McCormick, WIFF News 4 in downtown Spartanburg.